I've been living most of my life here in Vancouver for about ten and a half years, so yeah, I pretty much grew up in the city. I'm trying to talk myself out of getting high. Ten people got me asking questions why. Look, it's so lonely. It's really hard to say where do we feel safe in the city. You know, it's a city. There's there's a lot of danger out here. There's a lot of gangs. There's a lot of drugs. There's a lot of there's a lot of abuse, you know, to our native people. Got me asking reasons why. Look, it's so lonely if you don't even know me, but I try. I fall if you find me on the ground high. Pull me up before I die. It was a school, residential school, and she said she hated it because she got whipped a lot. I think that still affects your grandma? Yeah. How do you see it affecting her? Because, like, sometimes when she gets really mad, like, she starts crying because she remembers all the bad things that happened to her when she was little. Yeah. You think it affects you? Yeah. How does it affect you? Because whenever I see her cry, it makes me cry. And right now I feel like I'm going to cry. I never liked school. Jamie and racist people there. I tried talking to like the teachers. People cut me off. And then like I get more ignored. And then the teacher will say like, um, I'll be there in just a second and she totally forgets about me. And then it feels like I'm not important so I just kind of feel like I'm shrinking. Um, they treat me like um, that I like steal from them. Mm. That I'm not a true person. That I drink. That I'm a violent person. So they're scared of me. So they, they don't want to like come anywhere near me. Mm. That's the kind of thing they do. Well, sometimes your friends, like, you know, you got a lot, a lot of city kids that lived here their whole lives. And then they don't know anything about their culture. They don't know anything about themselves. They don't know where they come from. And so I guess in a way, in a sense that like, you know, especially as native kids, like native youth, you know, growing up in the city, you feel lost and you don't know where you come from. And so you react to that and you just, you know, all this anger comes out. And, and so sometimes, it's like, you know, these, these youth get mad and they do really stupid shit, you know, like steal cars and breaking in entries and like robbing people. And it's really, it's, it's a lot of craziness. Being out late at night is kind of, I don't like being out that late by myself because especially along Hastings or somewhere up the street, there's always those guys driving by trying to pick you up. It's really gross. <laughs> Living in the cities, you know, it's, I've been, you know, it's easy to say, you know, I hit rock bottom last Christmas, because I, I did, you know, it's easy to say that, it's, it's almost cliche, it's, it's, it's like I've been strapped to a yo-yo, just kind of bouncing off that rock bottom for, for like months on end, it was, but that passed, you know, that passed after I came into um, mentorship. Mentorship was the key that, that got me out of that cycle. And uh, yeah, that's why I work with Kaya, because they're there to support youth, you know. I definitely need that support. We feel safe at these, at these uh, youth drop-in centers, you know, like, you know, because uh, you know, you go to you go to these, you know, to these youth workers, and you can talk to them about stuff, you know, and it's all confidential, and you know they have experience because a lot of the youth workers also grew up in the city too, and 
they know what it's like to be a Native youth. This guy was talking about um, that there'll be seven generations of hard times for us, and that like after that seven generations will rise up and like there will be no more. Um, I, I like to say depression from us because like we've had it hard because I know for the past two generations that like we had to go like to that um what is that residential school? Ooh, that day was like horrible. We like got beaten up and stuff. It was horrible. And that like since then like people have like gone into whole drinking and thing. That's how we got the whole like name Chug. And like I don't like that because it's like their fault for doing that. And Stan said after the seven generations will the the youth will be like the ones who would like come back and like stop all that. And I think that is so cool because I feel like I'm like sort of one of those and that I want to help to like be like one of me. That's all I have to say. I really encourage youth to look inside themselves and, you know, find those songs and find the, those dances, you know, talk to the elders. And, and um, I feel that if more youth do that, then well, there, there'll be an uprising. I really believe that someday there'll be a big uprising of Native people as a Native nation, you know, and be stronger for our children to come, you know, and for their children, for their children and break the cycle and break the chains. Transformation, good to bad, as an adolescent bastard wasn't hard to find. Rapping about life, love lost comes from my mind, body, and soul. After I'm dead, where's my spirit gonna go? I know so I guess I'm at the flow on where the story go wrong. It's not an incident, I'm not convinced coincidence that we defy genocide. I celebrate and ride, but death is inevitable. We got memories that are unforgettable. Like a million masks we told for small pockets, black rocks. We all struggle, so what you got? Are you a victim or a victor? Nothing can stop these dreams I'm trying to top myself out of getting high. Ten pieces got me asking reasons why. Look, it's so lonely if you don't even know me, but I try. I fall if you find me on the ground high. Pull me up before I die. Pull me up before I die. I'm trying to top myself out of getting high.